Okay, hi. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to talk about defining trigonometric functions on the unit circle. And um, to get started, we're going to start out by, of course, drawing a unit circle. And we're going to use a formula that we saw last time. Now, the formula that we saw last time is that the arc length is equal to theta times the radius of the circle. Okay, so we're going to start out, it's not the best circle. I'm going to make my arc length, I'm going to call it T. Right, not a very good circle. But it's a circle of radius 1, so R is equal to 1 here. And we're going to have theta over here, and we're going to call this arc length over here, we're going to call it t. Now remember that the arc length, which is t, is equal to the radius times theta. Well that means that since r is equal to 1, that t is equal to theta. Okay. So when we're dealing with the unit circle, we can we can define our trigonometric functions, as you'll see, either in terms of theta or in terms of t uh, if uh, theta is in radians. Okay, so we're going to make this, and next we're going to get along to actually defining our trigonometric functions. And to do that, I'm going to put the definition right here, and I'm going to say let t or equivalently theta be a real number and let p equal x comma y be the point on the unit circle that corresponds to T. Okay, and we're going to, let me choose a different color for that point, but that point is essentially just going to be this one right here. So this is going to be the point P, and we're going to just label that point with the X coordinate and the Y coordinate, okay? So if we, uh, if we drop a line down here, this over here is going to be this length over here, and that's going to be the X um, that's going to be this distance over here. And that's going to be my y coordinate, or if you if you've seen trigonometric functions before, you can think of the y coordinate as the height of your triangle. And the x coordinate for this point is just going to be the distance to this point, which is the base over here. Um which is um, which is just going to be this value over here, right? So the uh, the x coordinates is going to be this distance over here, or how far do we get to over here? Now the y coordinate is just going to be the height of this point, like it usually is. So the height of this point is the y coordinate. Okay. And when we do that, we can use t or equivalently theta. Now, if we're not on the unit circle, we're going to have to use a different formula, as we'll see later on, or we can uh, just use theta. All right. So my trigonometric functions, and there's six of them, and they're all based on x and y and t, is going to be 
the sine of t, now we can also use theta because remember on the unit circle, theta and t are equal to each other. So I can either use theta, or if theta is in radians, just uh, replace the number by t, they're equal. So sine of t is equal to y. Cosine of t is going to be equal to x. Tangent of t, or equivalently theta, is going to be equal to y divided by x. The cosecant of t is going to be equal to 1 divided by y. The secant of t is going to be equal to 1 divided by x and the cotangent of t is going to be equal to x divided by y. So you might notice that um, everything is basically can be determined um, is in terms of y and x or equivalent you'll see later on as sine and cosine. The tangent is y over x, so that's the same as sine divided by cosine. The cosecant is 1 over y, which is the same as 1 divided by sine. The secant is 1 over x, which is the same as 1 over cosine. And the cotangent is x over y, which can also be cosine over sine or 1 over the tangent. Okay? Those are our basic trigonometric functions. Now, we're going to, that's enough to really define the values for sine and cosine overall real numbers. But let's see some examples of how we can actually do that. Now, the simplest ones are defining for the quadrantal angles. Okay? So let's look at the quadrantal angles. Oh, that's messy. Here, why don't I do this just so it's going to bleed through the paper? Okay, so I don't waste paper that way. All right. So let's look at quadrantal angles. Okay, so I'm going to look at these quadrantals. Let me uh, just so I can uh, write more clearly over here. So I have the quadrantals. Now, if you remember, if I draw my unit circle. to the best of my ability. Zero degrees is going to be over here. I'm going to start out with zero degrees and I'm going to draw my term, my um, initial side in pink. Okay? Now, when my initial side and my terminal side are at zero degrees, and zero degrees is the same as for radians or degrees, um, well, what's my x-coordinate? Well, my x-coordinate here is 1, but what's my height if I haven't gone up anything? It's 0. All right. Now, x-coordinate has to be 1 because I have no height and I'm touching the unit circle. That means x is 1. All right. Now, if I go up, if I increase by 90 degrees, so my terminal side is right up here, right? That's 90 degrees or pi over 2. So 90 degrees, I make a right angle like that. Well, here, I'm going left or right. I'm not going at all. I'm going straight up. So here, my x-coordinate is going to be 0, but my y-coordinate is going to be 1. And that's for pi over 2 or 90 degrees, right? So it's this square angle right here is pi over 2 or 90 degrees. So when you see uh, like that just means pi over 2 or 90 degrees, right? Now, if I go another, say, 90 degrees all the way to over here, that is going to be either pi radians or 180 degrees, okay? Now, what's this value over here going to be? All right, so I'll write it up here. Well, 
I've gone up, my height is zero, right? Now, you're right, this distance over here, if you said one, you're correct, but I'm going on the negative x-axis. So this is uh, a, a value of negative one for x. And down over here, I'm going to have 3 pi over 2, or 270 degrees. And over here, you're going to say, well, if we, uh, if we come around to this angle over here, what is this angle? Well, or the, what are the x and y's for this angle over here? Well, the x value is, well, we're not going to the left or right at all, so the x value is 0. Now, the, we're touching the unit circle, and since we don't, don't have anything in the x-coordinate, the y coordinate has to have a length of 1, but it's in the negative direction, so it's going to be negative 1. And then, of course, if we come back to 2 pi, which is going to be the same as 0 degrees, because the terminal side is all that really matters. So, like I, like I said before, so again, the x and y coordinates are going to be 1 and 0. So we know x and y for each of these positions, right? So that's all we really need to know. And we can say that this is going to be 0 or 2 pi over here. Alright, 0 degrees, 0 radians, or 2 pi degrees, or actually, uh, or 360 degrees. Alright, so let's, let's define some of these. And up here, I'll write pi over 2 or 90 degrees. Right, so that's fine. All right. So let's, um, now, if you want to look these up in a table, if you forget or something, they're in your book. But I'm going to do a couple examples. So let's find the sine of pi radians, or 180 degrees. Well, that's this point over here. Now, my x coordinate is negative 1, but sine is defined as the y coordinate. So the sine of pi is going to be 0. And the cosine of pi, well, my cosine is going to be negative 1 over here. My x coordinate is negative 1, so the cosine of pi is going to be negative 1. And the tangent which is x divided by y, so the tangent of pi is going to be 0 divided by negative 1, which is going to be 0. Now, the cosecant, of pi, well, the cosecant of pi is equal to 1 over y, right? But y over here is 0, so it's 1 over 0, and it's not defined. So remember, the cosecant is not defined anywhere where y is 0, so it's undefined. Okay? And the secant of pi, is going to be equal to 1 over x which is equal to 1 divided by negative 1, which is equal to negative 1. Okay? And the cotangent of pi is equal to x over y, which is going to be equal